Okay, the epoxy on the bottom side of this set up pretty nicely, and I've still got probably another hour of daylight, so I'm gonna put on the first layers of glass to the top side. So I've got my cloth and I've got my mat all cut out for what I wanna lay in here for the very first layer. And I've got my resin, hardener, got a little cup, chipper brush, stir, and look at this, even this time, I remember gloves. Nothing magic here. The epoxy mix is the same as when we were just wetting out the plywood. Three to one. I guarantee you, these gloves aren't going to do me any good. They're going to break and they're going to get covered in sticky stuff and I'm going to end up throwing them off, but it never hurts to try. Okay. Uno. Oh, it was almost not an uno. Dos. Tres. Bilingual. <laughs> I know you're proud of me. I knew it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of epoxy on just so that I have a little bit of tackiness and when I lay down the mat it kind of sticks in place a little bit but then I'm gonna wet it out from the top. It tells me I'm going to want twice as much. I'm just going to do it. Quattro. Cinco. This might be very wasteful. Seis. Yeah. Dos. I know you're impressed. I know it. You're probably digging the hair, aren't you? I know it. Put a little bit in here just so that my mat doesn't slip around. Okay, first piece of mat I cut undersize. Why? I want a bit of a gap around the edge so that when I put subsequent layers on, I can actually allow it to build up into the edge. And that way, hopefully, by doing this on this one layer anyway, I'll minimize the uh, bump you know that you'll see evident in the fiberglass from the multiple layers. When you're wetting out fiberglass. You obviously don't want to put on too much, but let's focus on the first part. First part is, you know it's too dry and not successfully wet out, the fiberglass still appears white. It has a nice translucence across the board, and you know that it's all wet out equally. So, first thing I'm going to do, try to get this wet out. And then I'll worry about dealing with the excess resin that I'm putting in here, because, trust me, I know, there's probably too much resin here. Yeah. Air bubbles under here. I'm not gonna quite work those out just yet. Lay in this piece of cloth, which was cut such a size to go right up to the edge. And by the way, this first layer of mat and cloth is designed to bring the load up the edges one way you know, with the next pieces. When I cut out the next pieces of mat and cloth, it'll be a slightly different shape so that in the, this case the bottom piece would then wrap up the edges instead of the top piece wrapping down the edges and that way they kind of interlock together ultimately that's the plan anyway it tells me i'm actually going to need a bit more resin than what i prepared Let's see the areas that are dry are slowly soaking up the resin it's more translucent here over time so good Let's sit a moment Get our handy dandy roller here. Get her underneath here. I'm laying this glass down in a hole. I'm not really gonna be able to necessarily squeeze out any excess resin. So I wouldn't necessarily call this excellent technique. There it is. Of course that needs to mix up a bit more resin. So I will do that in a moment. Okay. Next. A little bit of resin on here, make this nice and sticky. Doing the walls here because the next piece is draped over the top and down the little walls. I want them to be nice and sticky. Mm. Pressing this down into that resin we just painted on. I'm trying to get it to stick a bit. Right out. And I think I have to make some more resin. This mat is apparently approved for epoxy use. The thing about mat, it usually has a binder in it that's made to dissolve when you're using a polyester resin, and it doesn't apparently do that in an epoxy resin. But this particular mat says it's approved for both, so now that works out, but that's what we got. 
Oh, I'm wearing gloves. Oh, resin up. I'm going to try to start bending these down the sides. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a chore until they're wet out and a little bit more flexible. Or it could be a total disaster for all I know. Whoa! And there's Pirate. Hey, buddy. Once it gets saturated, it becomes a little more pliable. I'm sure Andy at Boatworks today would lose his shit if he saw the things I'm doing. But he's not here right now. So, I'm doing whatever the hell I want. What a joy it is to work with this slower setting resin though. Fast set that I had from West Systems, good stuff. But man, stressful. It will just start heating up, hardening up, and you're done. This, you got plenty of working time. I like it. Yeah. I gotta wet that out more, but first, let's try to get it formed here a bit. Hi, Pi Pi. What are you doing, buddy boy? Oh, Kurt. You're getting there. You're getting there. First fiberglassing project in a long while, and I decided to go for multiple compound edges. Jeez. It bubbles up when it doesn't quite fit right. Okay, a relief cut somewhere. What song do you have stuck in your head right now? I have the greatest hits from uh, Ray's Infant Swing. Okay, here's the current state of our platform. I've got a layer of mat and a layer of cloth on the interior, and just a layer of mat around the exterior. And I've ground down all the excess off the edges. And you can see, I don't do perfect work here. Had a couple areas that didn't really laminate properly. They had air under them. So I began grinding them down. Before I put another layer on this top surface, I gotta sand this whole thing down with about 80 grit, right? To give it a nice tooth, but also knock down any of this loose stuff or little bumps and things that I have here from doing a very messy job. What we're gonna work on today is the bottom, which is where I really hope to gain the most strength for this platform, tying everything together here with fiberglass. So what I'm going to do is I cut out my pieces of mat and I'm going to cover this surface. I'm gonna cover this surface, right? I'm also gonna cover the backside of the face as well as the face. And then I have those strips there in the end that are going to wrap around this edge here and tie this to this all in one layer. I'm not doing anything to actually wrap around edges like this, not with the mat. I'm going to only do that with the cloth because it conforms well to smaller profile edges like this. And the cloth will then tie the top and the bottom surfaces together. So that's how we're gonna proceed. Hmm, I did nine and three. Just like yesterday, I'll give it a little bit of glue. Stick down nice while I position it. And I can wet out the pieces. Hopefully, it won't move anywhere. Piece number one. You can also do this. Did something stupid last night. I took my roller and I didn't clean it and I left it sitting on the driveway. So in order to uh, get my roller for today's use, I had to take a hammer and unstick it from the driveway. <laughs> and it still rolls. A lot of the grooves are full of hardened epoxy. Okay, here's our platform. Everything's cured since yesterday and I took a wood rasp and I filed off all the raw edges. So the only thing that's left uncovered on this entire platform are the, the very edges where I didn't want to attempt really to wrap with mat. So this is ready. Everything is uh, sanded. Everything is uh, wiped down with acetone. And my tasks for today are first to use these strips and build up these edges here. And put some additional fiberglass mat on there. I will immediately move on to applying this sheet of cloth, which I've designed and cut out to basically wrap all the way around this thing and put overlapping edges on all sides. But anyway, that makes a small batch for this first step. There's three, and there's one. I get it sort of positioned, I can wet it out. Once it wets out, the stick can stay in place. That's gonna be my nemesis today. I'm even gonna eliminate that problem. 
Bye. Resin gets sucked into this. Say. I guess the jury said go for it. Got two minor patches here from where it didn't adhere the first time, so these little patches in. Minor little thing, really just to bring it up to proper height. Means that's properly saturated. It's gonna stick. <sighs> my next batch of resin. Okay, as I always do, I'm going to put a little bit on here just to serve as glue so that my piece of fiberglass cloth doesn't slide around. And I actually still have to cut the hole out. Oh, I just realized I forgot that. What in the hell is that? I'm wondering the same thing. Stupid here. I made reference marks on here. Go there. Go approximately there. That's about right. Now, I didn't cut this out yet. And I should have. I always cut on diagonals towards the corners. And that way the pieces lay down and they might slightly overlap, but I hold out. Lay down when I want it to. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to mark it. I have a sharpie thing. Keep about a half inch, fold it onto the floor. The rest is getting cut out. Okay, back to this. Wet this out. Should be a little bit easier to wet out than the mat was. Eat your heart out, Andy from Boatworks today. <laughs> You're probably looking at his going. Yeah. Trust me, I'm wondering the same thing. Did this guy learn these techniques? Well, truth be told, this guy hasn't learned any techniques. He's just doing whatever he's doing. Okay. Uh, come here, roll. Come on here. Dry spot. Dry spot. Bubbles. Great. Moving on. I just started a whole new YouTube channel called Shoddy Work by Duke. I don't know. It may not actually turn out to be so shoddy after all, but we will see. I don't want too much excess resin. I want just enough resin here to wet out the cloth, stick it down properly. Good. Yep. I think everything get a little bit weird now. Heard when you're doing a vertical surface, apply your resin top down. I'm going to assume that's because of gravity, and I'm not going to guarantee that's why. A little pull here or something. I don't know what's going on with that? That's not much care. I'm going to learn to leave things alone go back and fix it tomorrow. And those little areas that popped up, fuss over them and they just get worse. That doesn't do anybody any damn good. Alright, not yet. Moving on. Let me prepare this. And then, wrap, wrap, wrap. You can do all kinds of fun wraps. Up down, genius. Up down. You know this is actually the bottom. Boom. Hit the top. As I wet it out, it sticks better. It pulls tighter around this tight edge. 
Well, it starts to look like I know what I'm doing. Don't be fooled. I don't. It's just sometimes things work out. And I have no illusions that I'm not going to screw this up. I'm good at screwing things up. Insufficient resin alert. I need more resin. Sometimes slid over a little bit. Much better. Resin on the end of just doing a test fit here before I finish this and it needs a little bit of relief work where I cut out the old platform just so this can sit down properly. Besides that, everything fits nice. And the good news is the composting head does fit down into its little pocket very nicely. All right, since I have the unfinished platform down with me today, do some small relief cuts or sanding here just to make sure that this thing actually sits down properly. Much better. Sweet. All right, now I need to grind off all the excess resin and such on here and get it ready for some nice finishing work. It's a very tight fit. I like it. Might as well do some grinding on this and then I'll finish it off with a sander. And that's that. Okay, here's the platform all grinded down. You can see there's areas on here. You know, like over here, there was a bubble where the mat delaminated before the resin could cure. So as I ground all this down, a little bubble popped off. I don't care about that. I've got areas here. Look up here. Right, that did not laminate very well. You know, again, I was trying to make these crazy hard curves and you know, I didn't do the best job with that. I'm also not gonna worry about that. I'm not going to put more mat in there. I'm actually just going to fill all of these imperfections with some fairing compound. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I, I don't really care about the small amount of strength loss from not having fiberglass mat wrap every surface. This thing is overbuilt. It'll be fine without that little bit of extra strength from areas that uh, I popped off. On the back side, more than anything, I'm just going to seal the entire bottom with straight epoxy and call it done. It's fine. The top side, I'll do tomorrow once the bottom dries. I'll mix up some fairing compound and I'll start to spread that across the entire surface, at least the visible surface, and fill any little imperfections like this and like this and make it nice and smooth and make it look very nice. And we will call that done. It's up one small batch. I also noticed that I'm using an obnoxiously small brush. I ran out of my two inch chipper brushes that I like to use. And I found this, I'm using it. Go wild, go crazy when you do it on your own. I gotta tell you, as amateur as my work is and as many mistakes as I've made, I'm still pretty happy with the way this is turning out so far. It's very, very strong. I have no concerns that the uh, composting head is going to fall into the bill, break this thing. Roots coming down this side, so smooth them out. I'm end up sanding this whole face again and blah, blah, blah. All right, let's call that done. Okay, for today's little project, I'm going to spread some fairing compound on the exposed surfaces of this platform. So definitely this. I probably don't need to do this because it's the head's gonna sit in here, but I'll, I'll probably put a layer in there. But definitely this layer and the front face of this thing just to start getting it smooth 
and get it ready for paint. I'll be using my epoxy resin from US Composites and I'll be mixing in some fairing compound. It's got the color that makes me think it might be phenolic micro balloons. That's the kind of brownish looking stuff mixed with something else. Uh, I don't know. A little weird that I don't know what I'm using. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna use. Gloves. Okay, mix up one small batch. So three to one. There's three. And one of the epoxy hardener. Mix this up nice. Okay. Ooh, it's fluffy. I'm thinking it probably makes more sense for the epoxy into the dust than the other way around because this is a bit challenging to work the dust down into the epoxy, but it's fine. It worked. I'm working this up into a consistency, something like pancake batter. So I think the amount that I put in here is probably about appropriate. It was guesswork. I kind of went for a, what looked like anyway, a two to one, two parts bearing compound dust, <laughs> one part of boxy. That looks pretty good. All right, let's apply this stuff. Start with trying to use this putty knife. We'll see how that goes. Now you use this stuff because the, the whole idea is it uh, provides a kind of a lightweight, thickened epoxy layer that can then spread around and it'll get into a little weave of the fiberglass cloth, any little imperfections and divots that you have in the surface, and then it's fairly easy to sand once it cures. And again, this is a support for a composting head. Perfection should not be really what I'm aiming for here. Get this gooped on, and spread it around, thin it out. End up wiping the excess off. I don't even know why I'm spreading it here. I don't really care about these surfaces, but get a little bit down. Still make the bottom a little smoother, even though nobody's gonna see it. I don't care. These are the surfaces I actually care about up here. Get it kind of spread out and then work it. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I could have gone a little thicker with this stuff, but hey man. Epoxy fairing compound first timer here, so that's what you get. Mmm. I think that one of the tricks anyway to using this stuff is you don't want to be too stingy, right? Because it sands away pretty easy. But you also don't want to put it on too thick because you don't need the excess weight and you also don't need the excess extra work of having to sand all the extra off. So find that perfect balance. I really don't think I need much on this very top. That sanded fairly smooth. I suspect the don't overwork it rule applies here too. You just end up causing more problems, I think. Or at least I do. And I'm sloppy. You all know that by now. Just trying to spread it around so that any obvious voids that I have, because there's some little weird shapes here. So I want to make sure I get some of that in there so that when I go and sand this and uh, achieve my imperfect results, they're closer to perfect than they are to imperfect. I might even go around the edge and kind of work it with my finger. Kind of like a small little fillet kind of effect. They're actually not bad. That's one of the nice things about remembering to wear my gloves. My finger makes an excellent spreading tool. There's a right way to do things. There's a wrong way to do things. There's my way of doing things. And my way of doing things looks an awful lot like the wrong way of doing things. A couple little spots here that are sort of low. Well, I'm just adding extra filler here. And hopefully I can sand those to shape. Uh, I'm just working a little bit around the edges now. All right, nothing really screwing around. Okay, I grinded and sanded down all of the filler and it's pretty damn smooth. There's a couple areas like you can see here, it's shiny, right? It's shiny because it's a little low. And then there's a couple areas where there's some pinholes and things. So I'm going to mix up one more batch of straight epoxy just so I can fill those little imperfections in. Get one last shot at it and then sand it down and call this thing done and ready for paint. But also so I could seal one of our stickers inside. Cool. This is a half batch, mini batch. It's one and a half pumps of epoxy resin and a half pump of hardener, which still gives us our three to one. And hopefully 
I have enough resin. I don't want to do much with it. I'm just going after the sticker <laughs> and any little areas where I found that it was slightly low so that I could fill it and then sand it down level. Uh, and any little, uh, you know, little pinholes and things that I found that are exposed in the, the visible surface. I'm not worrying about everything in here. This, don't care about. It's flat enough. Let's first get some of those low areas. And it's obviously going to be a, a high area when this cures, but then I can sand that down and hopefully not create more trouble. It will be less noticeably amateur. <laughs> pinhole in this inside wall here. Might as well seal that. Water can't get in when people are taking showers. Okay, important stuff. Sealing over the sticker. Super important, right? I might as well put a thin layer on here and give myself the last chance to sand it down smooth. Fairing compound really did help though with a lot of the low areas and little holes and defects where my fiberglassing wasn't particularly professional. <laughs> any edge is going to be sitting in water and for any length of time it would be this edge because it kind of sits right where the shower basin is in the floor. And you just don't want that sucking any water up into the wood if there's any little holes which I don't believe there are but you know what doesn't hurt to be sure. Double checking make sure we fill everything that actually needs to be filled. So now just kind of let this sit final cure overnight and I can sand it and I can paint all of the visible edges. You think I need a haircut? Good enough. I lied. Okay, so today I am going to paint the composting head base. So I get to do the paint. We have some leftover Genius Bucket EMC paint that we actually used for the transom. So this is the top coat in white, and this is the activator. It's two to one, so two parts paint, one part activator. I think I'm gonna stir it up just a little bit. Cause it's got like a film over it. Okay, so. Using our clever mixing techniques, I'm going to use the spoon method and do one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then three of this. We paint. Okay. Oh, let's bring you back. Raya. Maybe we'll do a second coat later, so don't don't worry about going crazy with making it perfect, you know? Oh, poor little baby. Baby doesn't like projects. <laughs> Very nice puppy. Yuri. So, when we painted outside, we got so many bugs and pollen and crap that we are inside with the vented doors. So, I probably should wear this because we're inside and it's dangerous. Okay, so we're going to do eight and four. Eight and four teaspoons. Very nice. Mix it up good, lady. Yeah. So you're going to put Coke 2 on this uh, Toady Bullet platform. And I would like to request that you put a coat on the inside portion as well. Okay. Good thing we put down a drop cloth. 
Yeah. I don't want the paint to out I would recommend that you just do a good job. That's amazing. You don't have to worry about it being perfect in there and nobody's ever gonna see it. I just wanted a layer on there just for, I don't know why. You're crazy. Because I'm crazy. Okay, that's it. All right, gonna call it done? Okay. Nice job, Bubs. Nice job. Okay, let's see. Cool. That fits good.